Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our examinees for both principal's tests and licensure examination for teachers. This topic is included for both exams. The Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers. Okay, let's have a, a quick review on the Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers. We are going to discuss the salient uh, provisions of this code. But before that, we will be having our pre-test. Okay, we have first, number one, toward the end of the school year, the mother of one of the candidates for honors visit you to ask about her child's chances of graduating with honors. She brings a basket of fruits in season for you. What should you do? So we have here four choices. A, reject the basket of fruits and tell her that you have enough at home. B, accept the fruits and assure the mother that the daughter will be given honor student. Letter C, respectfully reject the offer and explain that you might be accused of bribery. D, explain the chance of the daughter objectively and graciously accept the offer. So what do you think is the answer? This is just only a pretest, and later on we will discuss it one by one. Okay, the correct answer is letter D. Explain the chance of daughter, the daughter objectively and graciously accept the offer. Which of the following is not correct under the Code of Ethics for teachers regarding teacher in business? Letter A, no teacher shall act directly or indirectly as agent of or be financially interested in any commercial venture which furnishes textbooks and other commercial commodities. B, a teacher has no right to engage directly or indirectly in legitimate income generation. C. A teacher shall maintain a good reputation with respect to the financial matters, such as in the settlement of his debts and loans and arranging satisfactorily his private financial affairs. And letter D. None of the above. We have to take note of the word not correct. Okay. And the correct answer here is... Letter B, a teacher has no right to engage directly or indirectly in legitimate income generation. So obviously, teacher has a right to engage directly or indirectly in legitimate income generation. So mga legitimate income generation lang lang. Okay? Next, three. Every teacher shall participate in the blank program of the PRC and shall pursue other studies as will improve his efficiency, prestige, and strengthen his or her competence. A. Professional enhancement. B. Maximizing learning competence. C. Continuing educational enhancement. D. Continuing professional education. What do you think is the answer? The correct answer is letter D, continuing professional education. Number four, during the distribution of the report card, which of the following must be the foremost concern of a teacher? A, discuss the projects of the school. B, discuss the progress as well as the deficiency of the students. C. Discuss the unsettled bill of the students. D. Discuss the complaints of other teachers and classmates of the students. The correct answer is letter B. Discuss the progress as well as the deficiencies of the students. Number five, Ms. Chavez is a new teacher like you. During her first few weeks in school, she felt like quitting teaching. At the end of the day, she is totally burned out. If you are in her place, from whom will you ask assistance? A. From the principal. 
B from the parents, C from co-teachers, D from pupils. And the correct answer is letter, letter C from co-teachers. Okay, that is our pre-tests. Now we are here in the preamble. Teachers are duly licensed professionals who possesses dignity and reputation with high moral values, as well as technical and professional competence in the practice of their noble profession. They strictly adhere to, observe, and practice this set of ethical and moral principles, standards, and values. Section 2, this code covers all public. Have to take note, all public and private schools, school teachers. In all educational institutions at the preschool, primary, elementary, and secondary levels. Whether academic, vocational, special, technical, or non-formal education. And the term teacher, that's also defined here, the term teacher shall include industrial arts or vocational teachers and all other persons performing supervisory and or administrative functions, including supervisors, and all the personnel in the division office or even in the original office because they are performing supervisory and administrative functions in all school, okay, at the aforesaid levels, whether on full-time or on part-time basis. So they are part of this code. Now the question is, are the instructors or professors included or within the bounds of this code? Now the answer is no, they are not part of the, they are not uh, covered in the scope and limitations of this code. Since it's very clear here that only they are here, all educational institutions at the preschool, primary, elementary, and secondary levels, whether academic, technical, vocational, special, or non-formal. So, hindi sila kasali. But, uh, they are penalized in other laws, such as RA 6713. Later on, in our next topic, we will discuss that law. Article 2, the teacher and the state. Section 1, the schools are the nurseries of the future citizens of the state. Each teacher is a trustee of the cultural and educational heritage of the nation and is under obligation to transmit to learners such heritage as well as to elevate national morality, promote national pride, cultivate love of the country, and instill allegiance to the Constitution, and for all the duly constituted authorities, and promote obedience to the laws of the state. As a teacher, of course, we have to obey the laws. Whether we don't like the laws, but uh, since we are uh, taking an oath for the allegiance to the Republic of the Philippines, then we have no choice but to follow the laws of the land. And of course, we are going to promote the heritage, the educational heritage of our nation to our students. Article 2, the teacher and the state 
Section 2, every teacher or school official shall actively help carry out the declared policies of the state and shall take an oath to this effect. As you have noticed that before we assume office, we are obliged to take an oath. May pinipirmahan tayo na oath of office that is part of the requirement. And uh, without that, it could be a ground for us for a dismissal. So, kaya napaka importante na there is an oath of office before we assume our roles and responsibilities. Section 3 The interest of the state and of the Filipino people, as much as of his own, every teacher shall be physically mentally and uh, morally fit and uh, really we have our physical examination and uh, we are given subsidy for this physical examination i think 500 pesos each year and then for mentally uh, we are obliged to submit new neuropsychiatric examination before we assume office. And uh, morally fit, of course, from time to time, we are criticized by our critics if we are morally fit. As to this one, it's very uh, napaka lalim or it, it is very difficult to prove whether we are immoral or not. Ano bang moral at ano bang immoral? Diba? So, masasabi natin na this particular teacher is performing immoral acts. But the question is, do we have any evidence to prove that he or she is immoral. So, kung meron tayong evidence that he is uh, immoral, then we could uh, submit it to the proper authorities. Otherwise, we better shut up. Okay? Para hindi na sakit sa ulo. Okay, section 5. A teacher shall not engage in the promotion of any political, religious, or other partisan interests. This is uh, clearly emphasized here in Section 5 that as a teacher, we should be impartial with regard to the um, political activities. So, wala tayong pinapanigan because the objective of this one is um, not to alter influence to our students because whether we like it or not, we have um, influence over our students. Dahil kung magtatanong sila sino yung president mo or vice president or even mga local officials, they will vote for that because they trust you even more than their ano, their parents. So, kung ano yung ibuboto mo, yun din yung ibuboto ng mga estudyante mo. There is uh, influence coming from the teachers. So, kaya we should be impartial. Section 8. Every teacher shall enjoy academic freedom and shall have privilege of expounding the product of his researches and investigations. Exception to this, provided that if the results are inimical to the declared policies of the state, they shall be brought to the proper authorities for appropriate remedial action. Though we are not uh, compelled to make some investigations or researches. But if later we found out that 
there are discrepancies. For example, as to the fundings of the school or there are, there are discrepancies as to the system. You have to uh, brought it to the proper authorities. Hindi pwedeng isiwalat mo dyan sa social media platforms. So it should be brought to proper authorities. And of course, we are enjoying academic freedom. But in the Department of Education, meron tayong sinusunod na um, tinatawag dyan na academic mandate. Though we are enjoying academic freedom, but this academic freedom is not absolute. There are a lot of factors that we need to consider before we, we could say or we could exercise academic freedom in the basic education. Okay. Article 3, the teacher and the community. Section 3. Every teacher shall merit reasonable social recognition for which purpose he shall behave with honor and dignity at all times and refrain from such activities such as gambling, take note of this, smoking, drunkenness, and other excesses, much less illicit relations. So we talk about illicit, this is not legal or illegal relations like teacher-student relationships or uh, married teacher to married teacher. Okay, so that's illicit relations. And section four, every teacher shall live for and with the community and shall therefore study and understand local customs and traditions in order to have a sympathetic attitude, therefore refrain from disparaging the community. We have to take note that before we go to a certain local community, we have to study first their local customs. Like for example, you will be assigned to in the far flung areas wherein there are 90% uh, of Laan tribe live in that community. As a teacher, before you assume your roles and responsibilities, we have to study their local customs. And of course, some basic uh, languages or some basic um, some basic na mga ginagawa nila doon. Diba? Para we will be aware when we get there. If we could not uh, raise later on that Oh, we don't know that customs na bawal pala yan. No, we could not raise that one as a defense. We have to study first their customs and traditions before we go to that certain community. Section 5. Every teacher shall help the school keep the people and the community informed about the school's work and accomplishment as well as its needs and problems. Section 6, every teacher is intellectual leader in the community, especially in the barangay, and shall welcome the opportunity to provide such leadership when needed to extend counseling services as appropriate and to actively be involved in matters affecting the welfare of the people. Section 8, a teacher possess freedom to attend church and worship as appropriate but shall not use his positions and influence to proselyte others. Okay? You will not use your position to influence other people to go to your church or magsamba sa iyong paniniwala. Okay? Article 4, the teacher, a teacher and the profession. Section 3, every teacher shall participate in the continuing professional education. 
or the CPE program or the Professional Regulation Commission. Ito yung kanina sa pretest. And shall pursue such other studies as well to improve his efficiency, enhancement, the prestige of the profession, and strengthen his competence, virtues, and productivity in order to be nationally and internationally competitive. You can uh, attend seminars that is sponsored by uh, government or sponsored by private entities. You can attend that one. Provided that, of course, you seek uh, consent to your superior. Section 4. Every teacher shall help, if duly authorized, to seek support from the school, but shall not make improper misrepresentation through personal advertisement and other questionable rules. Again, Article 5, the teacher and the profession, Section 1. We have here, uh, let's have this highlight para mas maganda. Ayan. Okay. The teacher shall at all times be imbued with the spirit of professional loyalty, mutual confidence, and faith in one another, self-sacrifice for the common good, and full cooperation with colleagues. And when the best interest of the learners, the school, or the profession is at stake in any controversy, the teacher shall support one another. So, hindi yung nagsisiraan yung mga teachers natin in a certain school, in different schools. So, kailangan, you have to support, we have to support one another. When there is controversy against one of our colleagues or controversy against our school. Section 2, a teacher is not entitled to claim credit or work not of his own. This is very uh, self-explanatory, no? And shall give due credit for the work of others which he may use. For example, you are not attending that kind of seminar. And then you get uh, those certificates and nag attend ng mga seminars. And you put their, your names in, in the certificate. And you... Submit it as one of your attachments to your accomplishments. So that is not allowed under the civil service rules. And of course, it's very obvious na di naman talaga pwede yung mga ganong gawain. Though there are, may mga nakakalusot sa civil service, but it could be a ground for dismissal. No? So you have to remember that. And we have to take note of those illegal, mga illicit acts. Section 3. Before leaving his position, a teacher shall organize for whoever assumed the position such records and other data as are necessary to carry on the work. Hindi yung basta basta na after you have uh, designated to another workplace, so, you did not uh, train any successor to your position, right? For example, the, the position or designation of planning officer in a certain school. Alam naman natin na there are a lot of works ang nakalap, nakalapag sa designation na iyon, like the LIS the monitoring of the learner information system, the enrollment. So, you have to train first your successor before leaving the work. Kumbaga, there is a transition period. Okay, section 4. A teacher shall hold and violate all confidential information concerning associates in the school and shall not divulge to anyone documents which has not been officially released or remove records from the files without permission. You have to inform the persons assigned to that particular records that you're going to, to utilize it on 
o kung paano mo i-utilize yung mga records na kinuha mo on a certain office. And yung mga confidential informations na nasa paaralan na hindi pwedeng divulge to the public. One of those is the anecdotal records of the students, the health records of the teachers. So we are not allowed to divulge anything under those records. Okay, next, Article 5, the teacher and the profession. Section 5, it shall be the responsibility of every teacher to seek correctives for what he may appear to be an professional and unethical conduct of any associates. Of course, before you are going to seek correctives, kung sa tingin ninyo, he or she is unprofessional and uh, having this unethical conduct, of course, you have to have this evidence for such conduct. So, paano mo mapoprove that he is acting unprofessionally? or unbecoming professional, or he is unethical, he has an unethical conduct. So you have to prove by incontrovertible evidence. Otherwise, um, you will be subject to contempt or any punishment. If you're making uh, stories, about your associates without any evidence for such conduct. Section 6, a teacher may submit to the proper authorities any justifiable criticisms or criticism against an associate, preferably in writing, without violating the right of the individual concerned. So, preferably in writing. Section 7, a teacher may apply for a vacant position for which he is qualified. We have to take note of the word qualified. If you are not qualified for the position, then you have uh, no right to apply because only those has the qualifications has also the right to apply on the said position. For example, if the minimum qualification for service is three years, and you only serve, you are ser you are only you you only serve in the department for around uh, one year or two years, so you are not yet qualified for the position. Article six: The teacher and the higher authorities in the professions. Section one. Every teacher shall make it his duties to make an honest effort to understand and support the legitimate policies of the school and the administration regardless of personal feeling or private opinion and shall faithfully carry them out. Section 2. A teacher shall not make any false accusations or charges against superiors, especially under anonymity. However, if there are valid charges, kung may valid charges naman, he should present such under oath to competent authority. Okay? But in the recent cases, in the recent uh, mandate, anon anonymity is allowed. Pwede nang magsend ng letter anonymity, provided that there is or there are valid charges. Okay? And there are evidence to prove the guilt of the said accused or are they the respondent section three a teacher shall transact all official business through channels except in special conditions warrant a different procedure such as when special conditions are advocated but are opposed by immediate superiors in which case the teacher shall appeal directly to the appropriate higher authority Okay. Section 4, every teacher individually or as part of a group has a right to seek redress against injustice 
to the administration and to extent possible, and shall raise grievances within acceptable democratic processes. In doing so, they shall avoid jeopardizing the interest and the welfare of learners whose right to learn must be respected. Next, Article 6, the teacher and higher authorities in the professions. Section 5, every teacher has a right to invoke the principle that appointments, promotions, and transfers of teachers are made only on the basis of merit. Okay? And Section 6, a teacher who accepts a position assumes a contractual obligation to live up to his contract, assuming full knowledge of employment terms and conditions. Article 7, school officials, teachers, and other personnel. School officials, teachers, and other school personnel shall consider in it their cooperative responsibility to formulate policies or introduce important changes in the system at all levels. School officials shall encourage and attend the professional growth of all teachers under them, such as recommending them for promotion, giving them due recognition for meritorious performance, and allowing them to participate in conferences and training programs. Now, if you are, if you have uh, known a seminars private sponsored by private entities you are allowed to go there provided you will seek a consent coming from your superior or to the higher authorities section four no school officials shall dismiss or recommend for dismissal a teacher or other subordinate except for a cause so there is a valid and due process. Section 5, school authorities concerned shall ensure that the public school teachers are employed in accordance with pertinent civil service rules. And private school teachers are issued contracts specifying the terms and conditions of their work, provided that they are given, if qualified, subsequent permanent tenure in accordance with the existing laws. Article 8, the teacher and learners. A teacher has a right and duty to determine the academic marks and promotions of learners in the subject or grade C handles. Such determination shall be in accordance with generally accepted procedures of evaluation and measurement. In case of any complaint, teachers concerned shall immediately take appropriate actions of serving due process. This is for our students and, of course, for our parents who complain the grades of their students. Section 2. A teacher shall recognize the interest and welfare of learners are of first and foremost concerns and shall deal justifiably and partially with each of them. You have to uh, deal it justifiably and impartially. So, dapat wala kang pinapanig, pinapanigan kung merong mga conflict between students. So, you have to become impartial. Under no circumstances shall teacher be prejudiced nor discriminated against by any learner. Okay? Section 4, a teacher shall not accept favors or gifts from learners, their parents or others in their behalf, from the word in exchange, okay, for requested concessions, especially if undeserved. So, kung may exchange na, like, you will be given uh, one kilo of rice, and one sack of rice, in exchange of the grade of his or her student, like, palagay natin, 89. Okay, kung bibigyan, ayan, if you will make this one as 90, 90, sabi ng parents, 
I will give you one sack of rice. So technically, that is a violation of Section 4. Okay? Section 5. A teacher shall not accept directly or indirectly any remuneration from tutorials other than what is authorized for such service. So it is not allowed when you're accepting a remuneration from tutorial, especially kung under ninyo yung mga estudyante and you're also uh, giving tutorials to the students. So that is a conflict of interests and that is not allowed under Section 5. Conflict of interests. But there are exceptions. What are those exceptions? Kapag hindi mo students or nasa ibang school, it, it is allowed. Article Section 7 of Article 8. In a situation where mutual attraction and subsequent love develop between teacher and student or learner, Again, the teacher shall exercise utmost professional discretion to avoid scandal, gossip, and prefer preferential treatment of the learner. So, you have to avoid. Section 8, a teacher shall not inflict corporal punishment. Now, this is still debatable on what constitutes a corporal punishment. Kaya, if I were a teacher, I will not inflict any punishment, whether it is corporal or not, okay? Section 9, a teacher shall ensure that conditions contribute to maximum development of learners are adequate and shall extend needed assistance in preventing or solving learners' problems and difficulties. Article 9, the teachers and parents. Every teacher shall establish and maintain cordial relations with parents. Talk about cordial friendly relations. Section 2, every teacher shall inform parents through proper authorities of the progress and deficiencies of learner under him, exercising utmost candor and tact and pointing out learners' deficiencies in seeking parents' cooperation for the proper guidance and improvement of the learners. So, para malaman ng parents on saan siya papasok in terms of uh, behavior. So, may mga ganun factor. Section 3, a teacher shall hear parents' complaints of course with sympathy and understanding. Uh, and shall discourage unfair criticism. So you have to listen very carefully to our uh, parents who are complaining about anything. Okay? Article 9, the teacher in business. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Pwede bang ma Karoon ng business ang mga teacher. As a general rule, yes, pwede under Section 1. A teacher has the right to engage directly or indirectly in a legitimate income generation. So, let's talk about legitimate, okay? Yung nasa mga legal. Provided that it does not relate to any adversely affect his work as a teacher. Section 2, a teacher shall maintain a good reputation with respect to the financial matters, such as in the settlement of his debts and loans and arranging satisfactorily his private financial affairs. Section 3, no teacher shall act directly or indirectly as agent of or be financially interested in, in any commercial venture which okay, furnish books and others cool commodities in the purchase and disposal of which he can exercise official influence except only when his assignment is inherently so related to such purchase and disposal. 
provided that they shall be in accordance with the existing regulations, provided further that the members of the duly recognized teachers' cooperative may participate in the distribution and sale of such commodities. Article 11. The teacher as a person. A teacher is above all a human being. Of course, we are a human being. Endowed with life for which it is the highest obligation to live with dignity at all times, whether in school, in home, or elsewhere. So, kahit saan man tayo mapunta, we are still teachers. Hindi na naiiwan sa paaralan ang pagiging guru natin. A teacher shall place premium upon self-discipline as a primary principles of personal behavior in all relationships. A teacher shall maintain at all times a dignified personality which could serve as a model worthy of emulation by learners, peers, and all others. A teacher shall always recognize Almighty God as guide of his own destiny and the destinies of many nations. We have always acknowledged God as why before we start and at the end of our class, we have to pray. Article 12, in Disciplinary Actions. Now, any violation of any provisions of this code mentioned a while ago, it is a sufficient ground for the imposition against the hearing teacher of the disciplinary action, consisting of revocation of his certification of registration and license as a professional teacher, suspension from the practice of teaching profession, reprimand or cancellation of his temporary special permit under pulses. Okay, we have here example. Mr. Tan is one of the youngest teacher in Akaran Community High School. So due to his young age, he has lots of friends in Barcadas. After school hours, he was always seen with his friends in the internet cafe, playing Dota, in gambling dens, and in beer houses. He also frequently seen in this school during weekends. Now, the question, o ang tanong na nakakarami, nakakarami, is Mr. Tan acting as a good model to his students? So, technically, it's a no. We have here, under Article 11, Okay. You have to read that one that a teacher shall place premium upon self-discipline as a primary principles of personal behavior in all relationships with others and all situations. And then we have here section 3, a teacher shall maintain at all times dignified personality which should serve as a model worthy of emulation by learners, peers, and of all others. Case number two. Mrs. Silver Martin, pasadyo na kayo sa screen name, Silver Martin. That is my screen name in TikTok. <laughs> Who has been teaching for the last 25 years, refused to attend an important conference in Mindanao. So every time he asks by the principal to attend such activity, or every time, he always requests a new teacher to attend as a professional teacher. Is it right to express refusal in attending conferences? The answer is no. So according to Section 3, Article 2, that uh, we have to participate in the CPR, the Continuing Professional Program of the PRC. Para maging productive naman tayo and to become uh, globally and uh, international competitive individual. Case number three. Being a person known for his integrity and credibility, Mr. Wilson has been serving as part of the Board of Election Canvasser for the past 10 years. However, in the coming elections, his mother will be running as a barangay captain. Because of this, he asked to campaign for her. 
Is it all right for him to campaign for his mother's candidacy? Explain your answer. As a general rule, no. So, kung hindi naman nakita, pwede. Pwede ba? As a general rule, according to law, that is not allowed. Section 5 provides that a teacher shall not engage in the promotion of any political, religious, and other non-partisan interests. So, whether mother mo siya or father, there is no strict stipulation but all. And shall not directly or indirectly solicit, require, collect, or receive any money or service or other valuable materials from any person. And, uh, or any entity for such purpose. Okay? So perhaps that is the end of our topic.